So as we start to now come round, so we've worked through the fringe area, you can see now that we're starting to work around towards the ear area. So again, just making sure that Tyler's hair is actually, it's quite fine. So the hair itself will dry fairly easy and quite quickly. So this is again one of the benefits of using the Blade Glide. It just helps to keep that hair moist and um, just in good condition when we're working with the razor. So now when we're working with smaller parts of the hair, what I tend to do is turn my fingers just very slightly to try and hold the hair and bring it together. Um, and again, just softening the very, very edges of that part of the haircut. And don't be tempted at this point or at any point of this haircut to go in and sharpen little bits off with shears or anything like that because it takes away the whole concept of what a razor cut is about. So we're going to be keeping, um, Tyler wants to keep a little bit of hair just over the edge of the ears but feels it's a little bit long as we are. Now look again here, this is a perfect example, look at the density of the hair. So you can see here we're a lot finer and then all of a sudden we start to go back to being thicker, sort of uh, more darker hair and, and it's about the colour. So we just soften and we work through, just working on the perimeter edges and remember, look, there's the hair. So the hair shaft is coming down 90 degrees. So from here, you'll be able to see the top of the blade rather than if we were working on the face, you would want to have it flat that way. So again, this is predominantly the difference between working with a hair razor and also working with uh, a shaving or even a neck razor. Okay, so as we continue working around the ear, you can see that we've taken it that little bit shorter in front of the ear. Now, one of the things that is very important to make sure here is that do not take it too short above it because if we take this area here too short, it will make that closer and then it will make this stick out. And what it will do is it will make um, Tyler look and feel as though he's got massive ears. Um, because of the haircut that we give him. And again, this is something to be very aware of. It's about understanding the contour and the shape that we're gonna be creating. And this is where everything comes from the fundamentals and the basics. Even although we're using a more advanced tool and also an advanced, more advanced technique, um, we still, they all originate and, and you know, come from the basics. So as we move around, we're gonna to start to work from behind the ear now. So we just bring this down and then you can see here just again softly working, just softening the edge of the haircut and then starting to look at this length area down there. So again just making sure that we keep the hair damp. So we're going we're gonna to be taking uh, a little bit of this length away to actually taper it a little slightly bit shorter into the nape area. So one of the things that's very important to check is whether um, or what kind of neck area and neckline and hair growth pattern um, that the model has. So again, you can see as we pull Tyler's hair away, he's got really quite a nice, neat um, neckline area. There's very, very little hair that grows out with the actual contour of the hairline, which doesn't surprise me. Again, looking um, at the type of sort of facial hair and beard growth that Tyler has, it's quite light, quite sparse. So again, it's it's kind of keeping in tune with the actual growth that we have there. So we are going to work with a very slightly more graduated look now where we're tapering slightly down into the neck area and into this bottom part. So as I'm working here, I'm going through the top layer, then the next layer, and the next layer, and just working my way down. And this is the, the point about working with the hair all down as a perimeter length. If I had to section that off, and then cut this area, and then bring this down, this wouldn't match with that, and I would have to blend in. Whereas as we work down together, the two of them uh, you know, if there's any longer or shorter areas that are going to have a little bit of an impact on the haircut, then what that will do is it just means that they're all together.
So now let me just show you something which is very important that you actually are aware of and have a look at this all the way through the haircut. As I stand, as I turn Tyler to here, you can see, looking from this direction, you can see the contour here graduate down into the neck. As we turn him around, you're still looking at the same part, same direction, but now you can start to see things like this. So if we turn around to let you see what that looks like directly, you can see here that this graduates in, and this is where we've used the razor and we've softened and feathered down in there. But look at this part here. So that's what we're looking to achieve is this area. We're going to keep that length on the top, but we want to soften and go down this way. Okay, now I'm going to just go in and I'm going to change my razor over now and we're going to change over to the nape razor. Now what we're doing here, if you look at again the hair, can you see the small neck hairs that grow just through there and also just pay attention, we've got a couple of little moles and so on that are on the skin too. So one of the things that I'm looking to, to do is just to actually clean the very edges of Tyler's hair hairline, just the part that kind of sticks up. So we're going to be using the neck razor, just sorry, the nape razor, just very gently over this area here. And what this is doing is, as you can see, just really softly clearing and cleaning this neck area up. Now, the blade itself is staying away from the skin. We've got a very light guard on there, so you won't run the risk of cutting the client. And again, just really, really gently. So again, we're using a guarded razor. So if we turn around again, so just, and it, it ver really is just almost one or two hairs that we're removing there. But again, the right tool for the right job. So we'll move back over onto the Flexion razor. We're going to just keep that neckline damp. And we're going to still continue to work. So again, 90 degrees to the hair. The hair is here, we are 90 degrees to that. And we're just removing and thinning out the bottom area of the hair with the length. And as you can see, this gives us a really quite a nice textured feel to the haircut. And this is the whole concept of a razor cut. If you want to create straight lines, a razor is not the tool to do this. This is where you would incorporate the shears to create that. So, but when we want to create softness, we want to create texture, and we want to create movement, this is perfect for the razor. So as I'm starting now to look at the contour of the shape, you can see that we're starting to come that little bit flatter here. We're starting to control the movement of the hair by removing some of the thickness, but still keeping some of the length. So still working on the perimeter shape. Now we've started to come around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna bring him back round again where we started from the front area and now start to work around from this temple or sort of just above the eyebrow to come back round. And it, because this is where we started, so we've come back to here and we're just gonna connect those two together. So when you think about the concept of the haircut, again, very simple and straightforward. We're looking to create um, what is a, a diagonal shape and diagonal contour from the fringe straight across, straight across, diagonal from here, corner of the eyebrow, down to 
roughly around about here. And this will give us that straight line. What sometimes happens is people come from here, they then come down, then across, and then down. And that means that this area is too heavy and the side areas feel as though they're stuck on rather than it actually being in kind of tune with the rest of the haircut, the actual weight and the shape of the cut. So bringing the first area that we cut across and then this is the bit that we're gonna tie into the edge there. So again, starting to work with this, 90 degrees. This is what I'm making sure every time that I hold the razor is that I'm flat that way, not this way. So, and it's at this point what I'm gonna do is check and look for my balance here and here because obviously we're going to work from there and then they start to come down the same so that and that need to be the same height so again as you can see they're all good the main thing again that we're looking for is thickness uh, at this point in time so just working away with this excess length over the ear And that takes me back down into the area in which we've already cut as we start to work up through the haircut. So again, as I say, just to recap, you can see we've started from the front area. We have worked all the way around the whole perimeter shape. We've started to soften down the length of the fringe because the fringe came down before. And the reason for that was it was, when it was originally cut, it was pulled back the way. So as you can see, the hairline here is further. So when you cut everything to be the same length, so if this is cut to four inches and this is cut to four inches, this is two inches further back. So that will come down, but will be higher, and this will come down and be lower and give us a V shape, which isn't always the right shape. And it's purely because it was cut back the way last time. So because we've cut it forward this time, we've actually, cut the front area, softened this down, left these two temple areas, and then worked our way round to create that outer perimeter shape. So again, just make sure that the client is clean and removed with any excess hair on the face. So what we're gonna do now is we're now gonna look at working with the top area, our layering, or our inside shape of the haircut.